with our project all set up, the Git tools installed, and having run through cloning a project using Git Bash, we are now in this video going to focus on cloning a repository using GUI tools. Now GUI tools means a graphical user interface. So instead of using the terminal, which for some people can be intimidating, boring, or just overly complex, we're going to go with a graphical user interface or a GUI. And when we install all the Git tools, the makers of those tools actually provided us with a graphical user interface that we can use instead of the terminal. So in this video, we're going to do the exact same thing we did when we went through cloning a repository using Git Bash, but now we're going to use the Git GUI. So first things first, let's make sure we're in our repository, the Hello World project. Let's go ahead and click on clone or download. Let's copy the URL we need to our repository and then click on Windows Start. In Windows Start again, we should have all of our things up here. Now we're looking for the Git GUI. This is going to be the graphical user interface. So instead of command line, it's going to be an application like the majority of people are used to. And it's going to give us everything in, in a graphical way rather than just text in a command line. So here, we're not creating a repository. This would be the same as using git init on your local machine in the git bash. Instead, we're going to clone an existing repository, which is git clone, which is what we did in that other video. So source location is going to be the URL to our remote repository in GitHub. And then our target directory, we want to go ahead and just like we did in the other video, in our C drive, we're going to go ahead and create a new folder call it dev and that's going to be our folder that we're going to select now this is our hello world project so i'm going to go ahead and hello world is going to be the directory that i want that repository in <clears throat> inside of my dev folder and so leave the defaults the way they are recursively clone sub -mod submodules too submodules are something we're not going to get into that's an advanced feature of git so go ahead and make sure that you've got your url to hello world and then a new hello world folder to go with that repository or for that repository to be built in by git as it checks it out and downloads it from the internet and then when you go ahead and click clone you should see it go ahead and clone everything and if we open up our file explorer we should see our dev we should see hello world and again we see the files that are in our repository and here we can keep this open just like we did with the terminal and we can use it to watch what gets changed. We can stage changes and then we can commit stuff and we can push it up to the server. And we're going to run through that just like we did in the other one. So let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio again. And it should know about the project if you just followed along in the last one. And so you should be able to just click on this right here. If you didn't follow along in the last one, but you are following along in this one, we'll just go ahead and do it the long way. So open folder, C drive, dev, hello world, select that folder. <clears throat> Again, solution explorer is not always the one that's open. A lot of times it's right here in a tab. Click solution explorer, go ahead and put the thumbtack in it. And again, we see all of our files in here, the git ignore, the license, and the readme. If we open it up, we should see the changes that we made last time are actually reflected, reflected here because they became the most current version of our software in the master branch. So here we're going to go ahead and let's do the same thing we did before. Let's make some changes. So I'm going to go ahead and add another header. And we've got description, let's say, technologies. And then let's list off what technologies we're going to use in this particular application. And let's say we're going to do JavaScript, we're going to do HTML, we're going to do CSS, and we're going to do React.js because that's a really good framework. Uh, perhaps we'll use Vue.js because that's another really good front-end UI. And um, Node.js because we're going to have ourselves some back-end services and stuff eventually. So let's leave it at that for now. Click Save. You can see that the file has changed by that red check mark in Visual Studio. So let's go back to our Git GUI. Now you'll notice nothing's changed. 
And that's because although Git is tracking everything, the GUI is just kind of sitting there static. It's not actively doing anything. So we go ahead and click Rescan. And right here we can see the readme file has been modified, which is what was expected. And in here, it actually shows you what was modified. In this, the modifications where we added these new lines, and of course, there's a new end of line because we've added all those lines to the file. Just like when we did the terminal though, these changes have not been staged. They're just changes that Git knows about. So we need to go ahead and tell Git that we really actually do want these changes to happen and that we want them to be committed. So let's go ahead and stage the changes, which means that's the same as the git add with the period command that we did in the other video. And now the readme file changes are now staged to be committed. And just like we did on the terminal, we need to add a commit message in order to get it up there. And let's say uh, readme changed added tick. Technologies section. Okay, that's all good. We've got them set to be committed. We've got a commit message and now we can just click commit. Now we ran into this when we did it on the terminal as well. Git doesn't know who we are because it's a brand new repository that we just downloaded and set up on our local machine. And again, we got the same thing. We can use global or not use global depending upon whether or not you use the same email and name across all of your projects. In this case, I don't. So we're gonna go ahead, the only way to fix this particular issue, you can't really do it through the GUI. So we're just gonna go ahead and to fix this, we're gonna open up git bash, and then we're gonna to go to our folder. So if we look right now, we're kind of in the users folder. So we're gonna to change to our C drive. And then if we do list files, we can see, well, there's our dev right there, so we're going to cd into dev. List files again, we're going to cd into hello world. Now that we're in that directory, we're actually in the git repository folder. So now we can go ahead and execute those commands like we did before, the git config user.email. So let's do that, git config user.email. I'm going to use my tclark at newmont.edu. And then git, whoops, not got, but git config user.name, <clears throat> I'm gonna say Tim Clark. And now we're done with that. So now Git knows about it. So if we go ahead and click okay, we've got our change files, we've got everything ready to go. Now that it knows who, us, who we are, we should be able to commit just fine. Okay, we have now committed. But like we talked about before, we've only committed what was modified in our working directory into our repository in that master branch in our local repository. We still need to get it up to the central repository. And as a good developer would do, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make sure that no changes have been made on the remote repository before we try to commit our changes. So we need to go ahead and we need to pull from our remote server to the local machine to make sure that we have any changes that might have happened on the remote branch. Now, in the GUI right here, you can see you've got a lot of options right here. You've got things to do with the local repository that you've checked out. A lot of different options right here. Edit, create, check out, rename, delete, reset. So these all correspond to command line commands that you can do through the tools. Rescan, stage to commit, we already did that. And then revert changes if you wanna remove stuff and commit, merge local, and then the remote. The remote, you wanna do fetch. <clears throat> so fetch is where you're trying to find out if anything has happened on your local machine I mean, on the remote repository, it's the same as a git pull. So remote, fetch, fetch from origin. And it went through, looked, success, no changes. That means we're good to go ahead and commit all the change sets that we have on our local machine. So we can use push. And right here, we're pushing the master branch, which is what we have been working in. 
We're going to push it to the master branch on the origin, which is our remote server. And everything else you can leave the same. Go ahead and click push. All right, success. It's pushed it all to our remote server. Now, because in the last video we used the terminal to, to commit everything and we actually provided our GitHub email address and password, Git went ahead and stored that. And so the GUI didn't ask for it. Now, if you did not follow along with the terminal example, when we went and we clicked push, you would have actually got the exact same pop-up window where GitHub asks you to log in with your email address and your name, or your password, sorry. And you would have had to enter that before you would have seen this results window come up. So now that it's up, it's pushed. Now everything that we had changed in our master branch in our local repository has now been pushed to the master branch in our remote repository. And so if we go back to GitHub, and you'll see this was 19 minutes ago. Go ahead and refresh it. Three minutes ago, if we click on the file, actually, we didn't even need to click on the file. If you notice, the readme always comes up. And you'll see here, it added the technologies, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, React. And, uh, so everything's good. All right, so that is how we use the Git GUI in place of the Git bash, which is this one right here, if we don't like doing the command line. I actually prefer the command line. A lot of developers do, but a lot of developers like GUI solutions as well. GUI solutions sometimes are not necessarily easy, nor are they necessarily better. They're just usually more comfortable for beginning developers because most beginning developers are actually really used to graphical user interfaces. I mean, that's what a lot of IDEs are. That's what pretty much everything on a computer is. And a lot of new developers are very unfamiliar with Windows command prompt or very unfamiliar with Linux terminals. And so it's usually a comfort thing. I would suggest that you become extremely comfortable with terminal in Linux and Apple Macs or Mac, MacBook Pros and, and Mac machines, and that you become extremely uh, proficient with uh, Windows command prompt as well, having both of those tools, both GUI tools as well as command line tools inside of your toolbox is extremely important as you become a more advanced software developer.